Hello, everyone. Our guest today is Varalika Mishra. She's a journalist who's worked with leading publications like the Hindu and Hindustan Times, which is where we, we also met. Uh, she is a mental health advocate and founder of Your Story is Important, an initiative on mental health. Varalika is also a writer, and her latest book, Shanti Panna, is a collection of poems published in April 2021 by Norton Press. Welcome, Varalika, to the show. Thank you, Anita. Thank you so much. And thanks a lot for the lovely introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. Can you um, read out a few lines from your very interesting uh, book, please? Yes, definitely. So there are a couple of topics that I've uh, covered in my poetry book, which is called Shanti Panna, Voice of the Soul. So one of the topic is on mental health of the soul. So I'll just uh, read a couple of lines from it. It says, on a cold Sunday morning, a voice said, tell me your story. I'm here. The heart smiled and the therapist started the session. So this one was, uh, of course, on mental health and how, you know, it is so important to normalize the whole uh, idea around mental health. And, you know, I think uh, it's something very common and how, you know, each one of us you know, we need to take our own, you know, small steps in terms of normalizing the whole idea on mental health. So this was just about a session where, you know, a person talks to a therapist and, you know, uh, he or she or they, you know, they find the comfort when they speak to their therapist, you know, and they went out their emotions. So this one was about that. Absolutely. Um, very interesting lines also. Um, now, Varika, tell us uh, what got you into writing in the first place? Has it always interested you or tell us the story there? Yes, I think uh, it all started, uh, you know, <sighs> while I was in my school. I remember I was a part of these uh, so-called societies <laughs> where we, we had to write, you know, essays and poetry. And I think even in college, I was uh, a lot into writing. So I think I've always you know, uh, found my solace in writing because I think uh, when I was small, I didn't really express much uh, verbally. I was kind of an introvert. So I think I found my solace, uh, you know, through writing and I would always express my emotions. I would uh, take up small diaries and just write, just scribble my thoughts, do some sort of journaling. So I think it was always there in me since I was a kid, I guess. Uh, right. And your foray into journalism, has that helped you in your writing career? How has that been? Definitely. I think uh, my skills got, uh, you know, polished through various courses. And I think, uh, which is why I decided to do a course on journalism, in print journalism. And I also remember I did some creative writing course from British Council. So I think uh, a couple of courses have... Uh, you know, I think helped me in uh, giving me that direction in the field of writing and in terms of uh, expressing my views, you know, in a, in a proper manner, I guess. So definitely, I think uh, if anybody would like to explore uh, the area of writing and journalism, I think it will be a good idea to take up some courses. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, why poetry? I mean, you've you've start you started your writing career with poetry. I think. Why did you choose that genre over the others? I feel uh, it just came to me naturally. I mean, I didn't even have to think about it. So uh, I think uh, it was something which was always there inside me, and I think I decided to write my poetry book uh, while I was working in this think tank. In back in 2018 and I was uh, sitting at the terrace uh, of my office and I was just wondering like you know okay I think I need to write a poetry book and ever mm -hmm. since then it was there in my heart that you know uh, I need to write I need to write so I think I did start writing in 2018 in 2019 I think I completed my book like somewhat it was like a first draft and then I remember there was a close friend and she encouraged me that you know why don't you get it published and I was like, are you crazy? I mean, I don't think that, you know, I should get it published. This is just for me. She's like, no, no, you write so well. I mean, 
the world needs to read it like you know because i remember i used to share it with uh, my friends and most of them used to really relate to it and they would always tell me you know why don't you publish your poems and i, I would just tell them that you know i don't think i'm ready but i think mm -hmm. uh, i don't know whether it was the pandemic that gave me that push or what it was but i guess uh, uh, it was i think in late 2020 i think somewhat in november or december uh, i i was actually planning to have a talk on my uh, initiative on mental health which is called your story is important with uh, this person called uh, dr uh, sorry not dr uh, vijay lokpalli mr vijay lokpalli who is the former deputy editor of the hindu and he's also an author and he's written various books so he had opened up about his depression uh, for the first time uh, uh, you know on my uh, page your story is important through our conversation and you know he wrote an article and then i think that really motivated me that you know okay i need to write i think i need to publish something and which is why i guess there are few topics in my book which talks about self care mental health and how we need to normalize it so i think uh, i think probably it was because of uh, mr vijay lokpalli that i got the push because he's also an author and he's written several books i mean uh, he's yeah. written uh, mm. the virat kohli story and then yes. virendra sehwag story so many books he's written so i think uh, he was a great inspiration and then of course uh, uh, my principal from uh, miranda house uh, dr vijay lakshmi nanda i think she always motivated me that you know you should always write and i think uh, i spoke to her once and i asked her ma'am do you feel uh, i have it in me to write and she said definitely i mean you should you don't even have to think about it like just go for it so i mean that's how i think my journey began and i just decided okay even if it's the pandemic i mean it's up to us how we you know uh, create a new lifestyle you know i mean i think the situation doesn't really matter it's all about your uh, gut instinct and you know how you feel from within i think the motivation is always there inside you but i think it's the human tendency to you know look for answers in the outside world but i guess it's all within so look within to find your Absolutely. answers i think that's Absolutely. how the journey began oh, that's a very um, very um, interesting narrative of your journey uh, now tell me well like your poems are very intense uh, you know the ones i read in shanti panna they're very intense and they speak directly to the soul and they're very relatable uh, both by adults and by teenagers or the growing uh, population now coming from such a young person that's 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 a very um, deep profound um, impact you know that's very unusual so tell me what are the influences on your poetry and what makes you write such intense uh, poems so firstly i think uh, i would like to say that the age doesn't really matter because i guess uh, i consider myself to be an old soul so i think <laughs> i'm really old by heart and of course i think uh, uh, there are a lot of people who have really influenced uh, my work and uh, the kind of things i write and i think uh, firstly i think i would like to say it's rumi the sufi philosopher i've always uh, loved the writings of rumi and you know he he gets that uh, philosophical essence in his writings of course rumi is uh, one person and then of course i think i've read uh, a lot of books by virginia wolf silvia plath and then of course uh, there are these various uh, urdu poets so i think uh, there is no one person who has really impacted my life but then there are so many people and of course uh, my mentor dr dai saku ikeda who propagates world peace and he himself is a poet so i think uh, he has been a, a major influence in my life and of course uh, these uh, writers have also been uh, a major influence in my life and i think growing up uh, you know having different kinds of experiences in life i think they have also added up to my thought processes and how you know i view society and the kind of atrocities that take place i mean uh, you must have read i mean i've spoken about uh, you know the caste class and how there is this uh, discrimination that happens but then at the end of the day you know we're all made up of ashes we're all one but still we discriminate so i think uh, the the poems also have you know the essence of justice and democracy and you know how we need to propagate peace so i think uh, of course as a political science student also uh, i've seen you know the kind of uh, environment in which we've been brought up and the kind of news 
uh, you know, we get to read. So I guess uh, it all has, you know, impacted my thought process. And I think uh, that is all you will get to read in Shanti Panna, which is, of course, the voice of the soul. So I guess anybody who reads it, like you said, be it an adult or a teenager, I think uh, every person would be able to connect with it because I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's coming from a soul and, I, and we all know, you know, we're all the same. You know, we're all from the earth and we're going to go back to it. So I think the essence remains the same. So I, I think uh, all my experiences and of course the authors I've read, I think they all have uh, had a huge impact, you know, in, in my writing and in my thought process. So, yeah. Now, uh, you, you've spoken a lot about mental health and, uh, you know, your mental health initiative and all. Tell me what got you started on that. Have you um, observed society while you were growing up? And did you notice, you know, uh, all the, the trauma and the stresses that people are going through? What got you interested in mental health in the first place? Uh, so firstly, of course, uh, the kind of people I was surrounded with in terms of friends or family. I mean, I had witnessed cases of mental health and uh, I had seen cases of depression and I myself, I have dealt with depression and anxiety. So I guess uh, my own personal experience and of course seeing people suffer so much and then yet we see that nobody's vocal about it. Like, you know, we're always like, oh, I'm good. But you're not really expressing your real emotions because you feel, oh, somebody might just feel that, oh, I'm a weak person. If I tell them that, you know, I'm not feeling good or maybe, you know, today I'm just not in a good mood. Because I think we've been conditioned in such a way since our childhood that we're supposed to be strong, you know, we're supposed to be confident, we're supposed to put that smile on our face and, you know, not acknowledge our real emotions. So I guess seeing all of this really bothered me somewhere deep inside. And like I said, I've always had that thing for justice, like, you know, fight for the justice, fight for the right. So I think, uh, you know, that thirst in me really moved me to do something about mental health and of course the personal experiences and witnessing so many cases around me. I think uh, uh, that really uh, moved me to do something about this particular cause. And of course, you know, reading in the newspaper, seeing uh, the number of suicide cases, you know, that were happening. And I would just see that, okay, on one particular day, say, for example, on World Mental Health Day, we would have these debates and all. And the next day, we would be back, you know, to our normal behavior, you know, abusing someone or maybe, you know, uh, body shaming someone or talking rudely to somebody. So I just felt that, you know, where is this humanity that we talk about? Or maybe the subject humanity that we've read in our schools. Mm. Like, was it just for reading and not applying it in your daily life? I think these were the instances that really, uh, you know, motivated me to do something. Like, there was this fire in me, which was, you know, waiting that, you know, you need to do something. Like, it had to just come out. So I think uh, that's how it came out. <laughs> Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said there's that fire in you. It's always that fire within people that motivates them to come out with beautiful, you know, creations, beautiful works of art, beautiful um, writings. So I, I think you've identified it. You're spot on there. Uh, now, tell me uh, in the in the book, Shantipan, now, what would you say is your, or which one would you say is your favorite poem? <laughs> That's a very difficult question. Because uh, all the poems in there are so beautiful. So uh, they speak, uh, you know, they, they speak about so many things. So which one is speaks to your heart the best? Um, I'll have to. I guess uh, every poem is attached to my heart because I think, uh, uh, you know, every poem has a story behind it. Uh, it's really difficult to choose one, but if I have to choose one, maybe one particular topic that would, of course, be mental health of my soul. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think uh, the poems under that topic, uh, all of them are my favorite. Uh, you know, uh, I like the one you wrote about love, you know. Um, where uh, you said that uh, it's not easy if you think so when it arrives it'll bring shivers to your spine the shivers which even Coldplay songs could not fix yeah you know uh, the one that says it's worth the ride and yeah. uh, love is the most beautiful one so I think you know the all-encompassing if I if I may put it that way in uh, what runs through your book 
uh, you know, when I go through it is, is, is that, that thread of love, you know, that love yeah, yeah. overcomes everything else, you know, that love finally triumphs over, you know, all Absolutely. man-made, uh, you know, distinctions and man-made discriminations and all that. So I think that love is the, is the overarching uh, emotion or feeling in your book. Is that correct? If I uh, put it that way? Yes, absolutely. It is. That's why I said it's very intense. You know, going through your poems, it's it's very, very intense. It, it prompts people to think. It prompts people to, you know, read it twice, you know, and that, that's yes, very intense. Uh, which is why after every section, you know, mm. there is a blank page which says, yes. what are your thoughts? I want the reader to pause, you know, take a minute to just reflect and, you know, to write, uh, you know, how do they feel after reading it? So I Absolutely. Think, uh, Absolutely. That sums it up. <laughs> Right. And that's a that's a good way of doing it, because then it'll it'll force people to think after every section. OK, so what does this poem tell me? What how does it speak to me? You know, that's a beautiful way of that's a very creative way of doing it, actually. Right. Very inspirational. Now, Veralika, tell me, uh, there are a lot of people who would like to write poetry. You know, I mean, a lot of people who love reading poetry, a lot of people who would love to write poetry. Um, what is your advice to such people? Where do you where do you think they should begin and how should they go about it? So firstly, I would like to tell them that, you know, uh, there is no one particular way of writing poetry. I mean, you know, there's no standard, you know, I mean, a lot of people might tell you that, you know, oh, your poems are so bad, like, you know, you can't write, you can't be a writer. Don't listen to such people. There is always a writer, there's always a poet inside you. So, you know, always believe in your work and, you know, always know that there is no standard procedure, you know, to there is no standard procedure maybe you know a particular way to express your thoughts you know just be yourself and just start writing you don't have to wait for a day you know when you'll get that training or maybe you know when you apply for that course you need to start somewhere so I believe I started writing I think when I was in my school mm -hmm. and I think I just wrote and there were people you know who told me that oh I don't think you write well but I didn't really take it to heart I kept on writing it didn't stop me so I think one thing that I would really like to tell uh, people and especially the youngsters is that, you know, firstly, believe in yourself, you know, don't let anybody describe your worthiness, you know, you need to believe in yourself and of course you need to work hard and for that you need to start writing, just make it a habit of, you know, say, may, you know, you can just write a page daily, you know, you can uh, devote, say, 10 minutes of the day to yourself. It could be a morning time or an evening time, whatever suits you. But take out that 10 minutes for yourself, you know, and it could be your self-care time. Like, you know, give that time to yourself. Let your soul express whatever is there, you know, and always believe in your worth. Because I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of people to put you down, but I think uh, one just needs to hold on and, you know, just Keep on believing in yourself and don't let anything, you know, uh, put you down. And uh, I think uh, I would also like to tell people that, you know, uh, a career or any status in the society, all of these things, they don't describe your worthiness in life. You know, you are still a worthy person, regardless of what you do. So I think if that is set in the heart and in the mind, then I think a person can go a long way in life. So I think Absolutely. the self-belief, the self-conviction is very important and keep working hard towards it and practice daily, write, start writing. I think that is something that I would suggest and don't stop yourself. Right, because writing is one of those things, you know, you evolve as you write, you know, the more you write, the more you grow, the yeah. more you, the more you think, the more you um, analyze, the more you learn to observe what's going on around you. So it's a very, um, writing, I, I would say is a, is a cathartic process, you're able to express yourself, whatever's in your mind, you're able to view other people, you know, um, from their side as well. So it's a very, um, full, uh, emotionally fulfilling process I think don't you agree absolutely I think uh, for me also writing has been quite cathartic I think uh, since the time I was a child and I think uh, I started off my career in writing by actually creating a blog 
So I think uh-huh. if anyone doesn't know, you know, how to begin like professionally or maybe like, you know, in an official way, you can create a blog for yourself and just start writing and just share your work with your friends and family members. I think that's how you can begin. I and mean, that's how I started. Right. So that is one thing. And of course, read, read a lot of books, read the newspaper, you know, they may try and want to read. So that also helped me. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Varalika, uh, tell me, are you? Uh, what's your next writing project? Are you? Have you thought of something, or what's in what? What's coming up there? Uh, I'm still processing Shanti Panna because uh, Shanti Panna was released in the middle of the pandemic last year mm-hmm. in April when COVID was at its peak. So I'm still, uh, you know, hoping that Shanti Panna does well and you know it reaches. Uh, you know, to the masses and it's also available on Amazon International. So people who are uh, not in India, but, you know, in some other country, they can also, uh, you know, purchase Shantipana and it is also available on Kindle. So I think for now, I am, uh, you know, still hoping for, uh, you know, I mean, I'm still working on Shantipana that, you know, it does well and it reaches out to as many people as it can, because I really feel that, you know, it's not about the book per se, but I think it's about the things which are written inside the book. And I think people, they need to read it because they'll feel that connect. And, you know, they'll also f- get the feeling of, uh, you know, finding that sort of peace within themselves when they read the book. And I think uh, the pandemic has created a lot of chaos and anxiety. So I think uh, if you read the book, you'll find your solace. So for now, I'm just, uh, you know, building on Chanti Panna. But yes, I have, uh, you know, thought about writing a book on mental health. And uh, since I've conducted a couple of uh, sessions uh, on my channel, uh, Your Story is Important. So I I am thinking of uh, writing a book on mental health. I mean, just like solely on mental health. So yes, that would be the next book. (laughs) Right. That sounds very interesting. I'm sure I'd love to read that because you've got like, you've been doing so many initiatives on mental health. And that, that would be something I think that everyone can connect with and relate to. Right. I'm looking forward to reading that when it comes out. Thank you. And I would also like to congratulate you because I think uh, you're also releasing a new book, I, I believe. Yes. Digital, yes. Social it, media, it, I guess. It's yeah. on yeah. Uh, digital content and yeah. um, the digital world, basically. So, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> that's also. Many that's, congratulations that's also in that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. So, um, Varalika, it was lovely speaking to you. Same we uh, we should have a more detailed discussion on Shantipana and on mental health, and you know, because all these things are so. I mean, your book is 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 very um, inspirational. It's very touching, and then the initiative on mental health, of course, it's something that everyone can relate to. So, I think we should have more conversations on that sometime. You know, when both of us are um, free. Yeah. We should have more conversations on this. But thank you very much now for talking to us. Thank you so much. All the very best in all your endeavors. And um, all the best for Shanti Panna. I'm sure it's doing very well. Yes, thank you so much for uh, having me here and for doing this. I think it was a pleasure being here. And I also wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you, Varalika. Thank you so much. Thank you.